Well, hi there, folks. This is Wade Rush, Rushland Poultry and Game Birds, RushlandPoultry.com. As you can see behind me, I've made some good finds at Goodwill and went and picked up another 48 quart cooler. Going to be building some incubators out here uh, this evening and uh, going to make them all digital. Uh, I've uh, started moving along with the times here a little bit, I guess so to speak, with technologies catching up with us here with these, uh, um, with these digital controllers, this little STC-1000 digital controllers uh, they they're all over the internet now uh, you can get them you can get them anywhere from six dollars to, to fifteen dollars offline anywhere from those places all in the US and uh, especially in China dudes you can get them all over the place uh, across the ocean if you don't mind waiting a week or two to get them but I'm gonna show you how to build a digital uh, incubator here folks and I've got one running here. This is my old, uh, this is my backup quail incubator. I hope you can read that. We're out here in the sun. It's, I, I set it on 100 degrees, so when it hits 99.9, .9, it cuts on. There's a one-tenth of a degree swing. It doesn't show the point. It just shows 99. That would be 99.9. .9. And it hits 100, and it shuts off. But uh, I've got a modified turner in here that'll hold 100 quail eggs. See, we're using 40 watt light bulbs as our heat source. I've had this old styrofoam homemade incubator for a lot of years. It's all beat up, and, but it still works great. And I uh, moved on with the times and put a digital controller in it. So I'm going to show you how to build one, guys. Stay with me. Folks, if you've watched my videos, you know that I love using these ceramic insert uh, light sockets. As a heat source light bulbs are extremely reliable as a heat source especially when you use two see here i got this old cheap probably old cheap mobile home shand five bulb chandelier right there and i pulled these ceramic bulbs five of them out of there for a couple of dollars for this chandelier and i got five of these bulb bases out of it i think it was two dollars two dollars and 75 cent at uh at goodwill that was a good find. And all of these styrofoam coolers here come from Goodwill. Two dollars and seventy-five cent each for the big ones and a dollar seventy-five for the little one. Alright, I was gonna just tell you all about that find. Let's get started. We're gonna be building this incubator around this right here, the little STC 1000. Chinese, pretty sure it's Chinese made uh, controller. If I can get the thing out of here, there's your instruction booklet. You are, 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 you're going to need that. And here's the little controller. You see your see your controls right there. So all there is is a spot for your temperature probe, for a 110 volt power supply, and the relay that's going to turn the bulbs on and off. Right there. All right. When using light bulbs as a heat source, you don't have to worry about wiring in a solid state relay with this uh, with this little controller. Since looking at the specs, this little relay in here is uh, is regulated for 10 amps, for up to 10 amps. And since a couple of light bulb, a couple of 40 watt bulbs only pull about a half an amp if they pull that much, we're good to use this controller without any need of a solid state relay. inch and a half hole saw <laughs> this is automotive grade RTV but you can use regular household silicone. I've used caulk. Something, just something to seal this thing in place. For the top of this, I got a pretty good size. That's probably, um, uh, an 8x10 out of an 8x10 picture picture frame is a piece of glass 
It's kind of rough right here and sharp, but I'm going to cover that in silicone so that it wouldn't cut anybody. We're going to lay this down here, and then I'm going to get me a Sharpie and draw it out so, uh, so I'll know how to make my cut. I want to put a big, nice big glass in this big box right here so you can see down in there really good. Just make your marks. I needed some rough. Just give you a rough idea. All right, you want to move your glass aside and come inside your cut by about a half an inch, so that you've got a glue rim, a uh, glue rim all the way around to glue your glass in place. And start making your cut. Bead of glue on here. regular old household extension cord guys powers everything you want it want the end you want to keep it because you're going to need a 12 volt DC um, power supply 12 volt DC inverter to drive your uh, fan that you're going to have in here unless you have a 110 volt fan of which I don't I don't have any of those right now I got a lot of computer fans though and in the event some of these digital controllers are 12 volt DC powered and so that being the case you would need a 12 volt inverter to also power up your your digital um, temp control unit. So you just take your regular extension cord like this, cut it, split it where you can where you can peel them. Sorry if I get out of shot. I might be gonna have to need the knife to to start that one so you can peel it back I want to go back with it just like you had it there's white writing on one side and it's blank on the other on the line side so you just made them right back up like they come apart this is going to power everything in the box when you plug it into the wall everything will come on You can see it or not, but you see the white writing on this side right here. There's nothing on this side, so you just find the same thing on the end we just cut off. You just seen it? Okay, there it is. Just twist them together. Just like that. Okay, and now at this point, I have some little uh, wire fasteners right here. These are godsend. And this is going to be the point to where everything in this box is going to wire up right here. If you're using these sockets like this, you want to twist white wire to white wire together. These go to your sockets. Black wire to black wire. Just like that. White wire to white wire, black wire to black wire. Twist those together. And since this unit 
does it all. It's uh, It's got to be powered up. It's 110 volt. So this is the wire off of a 12 volt inverter. There's two wires here, smart, white, and black, but there's two wires there. So I'm going to knock a hole here for the, uh, these two wires have got to be tied in here to power up this unit that's going to be slid in in the front of the box over here like this. So I've got to get these two wires run to go through where they can meet up here with this to power up our digital unit here. The styrofoam is, the thing about styrofoam is it's real easy to work with. I need to knock a hole right here for my wire to run in where we're going to mount it over here in the front. So I just take this screwdriver here, go all the way through like that and make a hole to run my wires here. They fit tight. So there's not a lot of air that's going to escape out of there. I'm just going to make sure that I've got plenty run in here. I can cut off any of the excess that I don't need because this here, like I said, it's going to power our unit. So you're going to split it here into two wires like this and skin them. and they are going to twist on to your power supply. One to one side and one to the other. And we'll put wire nuts on them here in just a little bit. This is another set of two wires together. This is going to be a thermostat. Your thermostat interrupt is right here on the loading side right here on the relay that's what these two wires are going to be hooked to they're going to go in one to one side one to the other and it doesn't matter how you do it uh, but that's going to interrupt to go to one side of our bulbs so I'm gonna get this slid on in see if I can get it through the same hole here And we can. And like I said, I put plenty of slack in there so that I have plenty to work with. And that should be more than enough. And the thing about uh, styrofoam, folks, I just take this about where I want to mount this and I push it on here and I just rock it. I push the, the impression of the back of it. And to the styrofoam, I don't know if you can see it, but you see the square right there. And right along that square, I make my cut. the controller. Now styrofoam also is right soft so when you go to press this in here if it's a little bit tight I take it out and we trim it up just a little bit And you see it's got these little locking sleeves here. They're a little bit taller that hooks it in place. So all I do with the styrofoam is just make sure that I've got a little cut on either side. So that when it goes in, you want it to fit tight. Just like that.
okay all right and once you've got it fitted in there then it fits tight then you can take it in and out to do your wiring and that's what we're fixing to do we're going to get him wired up now okay folks you'll see why we got the one of the long wires so you can run them through the hole here so you can run them through the hole like this to wire to your unit this is the temp probe that came with the unit right here it's got a long lead on it and on this unit you're going to notice okay you see where three and four right there where it says temp probe it's going to match up right here you see it's got tiny get where you can see it folks see those tiny little flathead screws right here on the back that corresponds to each one of your circuits here it has a little clamp it's got a flathead screw on it you'll need a little small flathead screwdriver where you can get in here and loosen these things up like this I'll make sure we got all right, this is a. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wire in our temp probe, which is uh, three and four. Three and four right here. And it doesn't matter how it goes in. You just need to make sure you get one little wire here into one side of uh, three and four here. Let's see if I can get this, and I'll show you after I get him get them mounted in here. Tighten them down on the and we got the temperature probe mounted in the slot for it right there. All right. Okay. We've split and skinned our set of two wires here these are the two that are the power the 110 power source from the back these these two go to the loading relay or the thermostat relay on your digital unit that's what turns the light bulbs on and off okay we're gonna hook in the power you line up where it says power supply right here you see the two two uh, clamps right here on the back Slide one in one side and one in the other. Then you take your screwdriver. We keep it in there. There we go. And snug it up good. They're in there clamped and they're really good now, okay? This, like I said, this right here. Make sure we got these. And these go to the, uh, this is your thermostat wires. They go to the light bulb and back to your power source. But two wires, these two wires here, go into the loading relay. Right here. Like that. All right. All of our stuff is in there. Power, temperature probe, and the loading relay that goes back to turns the bulbs on and off. Okay? We're able to we're going to be able to slide this back in here and then we'll go on back here and I'll show you how to wire up the back. Alrighty, folks and once we get to this point all the hard stuff is basically done well like I said the uh, extension cord here is going to power everything I think you see it a little bit better now this is going to power everything right here okay all right folks 
the two wires from the power from the uh, power supply to our unit to our digital unit that's these two wires right here the other end they're going to go one to one side one to the other of our power supply here okay and oh there it is everything is so it's camouflaged on me okay these are the two wires that go to our thermostat the loading relay these are the two wires right here now like I said the two the 110 power supply for your unit one of those wires goes to one side of the power supply one goes to the other it doesn't matter how you do it either way will power up the unit all right before we twist the uh, we're gonna take one side of our bulbs right here and go ahead and hook it to one side of this power supply with all these wires we got on here now like this I'm gonna take this big wire nut and put them all together if I can keep them all together here it on that time okay okay now like I said this goes to the loading relay this is the two wires that go to the loading relay on your uh, on your digital controller you're going to hook one side of those to the other side of this power supply right here along with the other side that goes to the power supply to power up the unit, the 110. Okay, so now to review, we've got our two wires right here, our two wires that go to power up our unit over here, one here, one here, one to one side of the uh, extension cord, one wired into the other. One side, the white wires is just what I use, the white wires is wired into one side of the power supply. It doesn't matter which side. I just picked this side. Now, the two wires that go to the loading relay, one side of the one side of these two wires, one of the two is hooked into the other side of the power supply and is going to hook up right here to the other side of the light bulbs. To the black wires that go to the light bulbs. Once again, only three contact points that holds everything. Okay, guys, we're at a point now. We hadn't got the fan and all that done, but right now what we're going to do is a power-up test. Check and make sure we did everything right. Okay. It's telling us the ambient temperature right here is 75 degrees. That sounds about right. You see the work light flashing? That's because the delay has probably not been set. It comes from the factory. It could be set anywhere from one minute to 10 minutes. We want the delay set on zero. So what you're gonna do is press your set button and hold it down. Okay, when that displays your different parameters, you wanna scroll down, or scroll up, I'm sorry, until you hit PT, right there. PT, then hit set again, and see it's factory set on 10 minutes. We want that on zero. So there is no delay. All right, and after we've set that, um, after we set our delay time to zero, unplug it, power it down, and now we'll plug it back up and see if our, if our adjustments took. The light should come on almost immediately. And there it is. I've got it factory set, the temperature, let me see. Temperature is set. I set it on 100. And the, uh, I believe the swing is only like one or one or two tenths. So whenever it gets down to like 99.9, it will come on. And when it hits 100, it will cycle off. Folks, the two most important settings that you want whenever you get this thing right out of the box, you really don't know what it's going to be set on. 
but the two most important settings, like I said, are the PT, like pause time, which is your delay. You want that set to zero. Email. So you hold your set button down for just a few seconds. Your HC setting, which is your heating, Email. heating cooling setting, zero one is zero one is set on the heat side. Double zero is cooling side. You want it set on the heat side. You want it on zero one. It will only go up or down one from zero one or zero zero. You want it on zero one. That is the heat setting. That's the setting you want. And on the PT, you want that set at zero so that there is no delay whenever the unit cycles. Other than that, that's the only other settings you need to be concerned about aside from your temperature of which I set it on whenever I'm messing around with this it holds up it runs it up a little bit high but to adjust your temperature you just hit the set button one time and it shows you where it's set and then you use your up down buttons here to adjust where you want your temperature set I set it at 100 like I said it shuts off at 100 degrees back on at 99.9 .9. and uh, so you got about a one-tenth of a degree temp swing with this unit all right, guys. That's about it on adjusting or installing your um, your uh, digital controller. I'm gonna go ahead and get a fan mounted in this thing, and we'll be done with it. Let's see if the camera will focus. Need a 12 volt inverter. 120 volt AC to 12 volt DC inverter. And that, my friends, that's why we saved this. It plugs up right there to drive your fan. All right. Be right back. And just like before, we need a we need another hole over here for the wires to go through for our fan. So we just take flathead screwdriver. Now if this was the plastic incubator over uh, our, our cooler over here, you would use have to use a drill, quarter inch hole or something like that to drill in there, but in the styrofoam all right, we're taking the lead, the wire, off of your inverter. We're going to run through the hole we just made here. And pull through here till we've got all the, all the wire that we need inside here. You want a little bit of slack. To, to work with there and we want to make sure we got plenty in here to uh, we want to make sure we got plenty in there to wire up our fan we got two two and a half inch drywall screws I'm gonna mount it where the wires of the fan this is a 50 60 millimeter uh, maybe bigger than that this may even be maybe an 80 millimeter it's a pretty good size fan but uh, I'm going to mount it in here where the wires are towards the power source here. So you just put these in the, in the holes right here. If it has the brass inserts, just knock them out. Okay, folks, we've cut our uh, inverter wire to length here. And uh, skin it back. And now I'm going to pinch on a couple of red solderless terminals So now whenever I power it up, I won't be in a, any danger of shorting out my little inverter once I power this thing back up. I don't have any bulbs in here, but I'm going to power the unit back up because I got it plugged up here so that I'll have power going to my fan. Alright. Now all we do here is it's just a matter of chance. You just touch 
text message received. You just touch one side here and do the same over here to see if the fan runs. If not, switch it around. You won't damage anything. It'll just run one way and it won't run the other. There. Fan is running. So now we know this is the way we need to clamp them up. All right, folks, and before we close this out, this is 5 16 drill bit. We need to put uh, vent holes around the perimeter. I'm going to put two on each side, 5 16. For air holes. So my 17, 16th inch vent plugs will fit in there real nice and neat. All right, let's do our last check. We're going to power them up one last time. And on she comes. Well, we got the two 40 watt bulbs in there now, guys. Guys or girls. Hey, I've had heard from just as many ladies that are doing this themselves. Tell you what, gals, there's a lot of you country girls out there that ain't scared to get your hands dirty. It's my kind of gals. But anyway, it see it's heating up fast. Lord have mercy. There's no romance over there in the dark Brahma pen, I'll tell you that right now. Girls better not fall off of that thing. Them two young roosters in there, I don't know, I got eight or nine girls in there. Them two young roosters. They are bad. It's coming right on up fast. degrees and it's off. I'll give you another look or a walk around here. You want your temp probe right above where the top of the eggs will be. That's where you want your temp probe to rest. Out of the way and right over the top of the eggs. We just tied the wires up back here pretty nice and neat. I may uh, fasten a little bit more on there, but for the most part, I'm happy with that. All right, folks, thanks for joining me for this uh, installing digital thermostat into an incubator, a building an incubator with, a, uh, with this STC 1000 uh, digital temperature controller. This is Wade Rush, Rush Lane Poultry and Game Birds, RushLanePoultry.com. We'll be back with another one soon, guys. Bye-bye.